this week on Dr. Drew After Dark. You know, I am a little bit more passive aggressive. Mm. For example, if somebody said something to me or asked me a stupid question, I would be like, do you hear yourself? <laughs> I would say stuff like that. that but, that's not passive aggressive. That's just aggressive aggressive. Yeah, okay. <laughs> do you have siblings? Yeah, I have an older brother. How's he doing? He's yes. a pussy. He's a pussy? No. My feet always has a bunch of hot chicks in it. Of and, course. And, and, I and don't... why is that, Dr. Drew? Welcome to Dr. Drew After Dark. Please be advised that Dr. Drew After Dark may contain sexually oriented content and be unsuitable for young children. Welcome to Dr. After Dark, everybody. We appreciate you being here. 818-253-1693 for the voice messages. And of course, the emails keep them coming at drdraftdark at gmail.com. And as I've said recently, if you have any suggestions or other people you'd like to see on the show, send them to that same email address and do keep supporting the people that support me so Tom is happy with us and we can keep keep doing this show and do uh, tell other people about it as well. Don't forget my streaming stuff over at drdrew.com. Check everything out over there as well. Today, my guest is Nasia Moreo. Am I getting perfect. that right? Moreo? Yes, perfect. Uh, Love that. Nasia is a stand-up, yes. actress, writer, chef. The podcast is called Mouthful, culinary comedy show. Those are usually words all strung together yeah. uh, that we see together. Culinary and comedy, not so commonly put together. Uh, we also have The Riff. You want to tell people about that a little bit? That's yeah, here so, in Austin. So The Riff is like an improv show where I have this gigantic wheel, and there's like three options in this wheel. There's number one, which is crowd suggestions. So everybody in the crowd can write suggestions and we put it in a, in a like little bucket yeah. where it's taken out randomly. And you do improv off of that. And they have to improv that. Number two is comedian suggestions. So they do the same thing. And number three is tell a story. Oh. So everything is How many of you improv. are up on stage for this? One. One at a time. At a time. But it's like oh my five, gosh. five comedians in total. Oh. Yeah. I, Austin is full of these sort of challenge shows like yeah. uh, uh, Kill Tony and stuff like that where people are always challenging themselves to do more comedy. Yeah. I, I've not seen that in other cities. Or not, more comedy is maybe not the right way to describe it. Just un, unusual settings and challenges. Do comedy. Go. Yes. And you guys do it. It's amazing. It's, fun. it's a good time. It really helped with, with my English and everything. And new movie is Down to Mexico Way. She's an actress. I said you can find out more where she is at her link on the uh, Instagram bio. I'm sorry, on Instagram. Her Instagram is at Nasia, N A C Y A. Is that underscore then? Yes. Underscore Moreo, M A R R E I R O. So the accent we're hearing is Portuguese, right? Yeah, it's from Portugal. Yeah. Where well, you were born in Portugal, but then you went to Norway. Did you oh, learn yeah. Norwegian? You know, let me see if I. I have to filter what I say sometimes because I don't think before I speak. Um, for, for the rest of this program, don't filter. No. Let's see what happens. Damn. Go ahead. Okay. It's good improv that way, right? Uh, so I, I learned Norwegian. Like I understand what people say, but I didn't like speaking because it would make fun of how I speak. Like I, the only thing I remember was like, how are you? Which was, which is the bra. Mm -hmm. And oh, so cozy. Show Kojli. Don't ask me how I know that. I, but yeah, I didn't really love it there. They're, they seem like nice people. They're they all are, they are very nice. I just I didn't realize I wasn't white until I moved to Norway. Oh right. Oh, that's so, crazy. Yeah. How it weird was, is that? Were they were they racist or something? Are they yes. all? Oh, but but I, I'm not gonna lie. But, sorry. but aren't they mostly racist? Sort of anything not Norwegian is shit. That's sort of the, one I of think those so. things. Yeah. yeah, I think so. I don't know. That well, is fascinating. Girls there are absolutely wow, like gorgeous. Yeah. All of them. They're like Barbies. They all do CrossFit. It's crazy. They are so like, far, that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. I <laughs> so, felt like I had to say something positive as I well. I said, okay, good. Yeah, all right. Yeah. So, and uh, so I've been preoccupied with languages lately. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm just, it's a long story, but I, I learned Greek and I speak pretty oh, good, so pretty cool. good French. And and you're and I always admire when people's English is good when it's not their native tongue, not their maternal language. And I couldn't imagine anything more difficult than doing comedy in in your non maternal language. Yeah, it is very difficult because the nuances are so important. Do you have to like listen like a fucking maniac to everybody else's stuff to try to get all the nuances, or do you spend? Do you listen to the cultural? How do you how do you prepare yourself for that? Mm, I never listen to anyone else's comedy. Like I like, for example, when I go to New York, I love watching comedy because I feel like their energy and how 
comedians in New York, it's very, it makes me really passionate mm. for comedy. Like mm. I love it because it's very smart. It's very witty. And they all have this certain charm that you're like, oh, this person might be the next big thing. And I really like that. Yes. Um, it gives me confidence for some reason. I just love it. Being a part of it. Yeah. Here, but, I feel a little bit more self-conscious. I don't know why. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Because New York audiences are rough. They are. But I, I don't care. Like, well, I the think, stand, you, you were at the stand yes. a lot, right? And the mm -hmm. stand is a pretty encouraging kind of place. It's like a lot of regulars and stuff. And mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, what's one what of those guys, what's the Jay and those guys, what's the name of their podcast? Legion of Skanks. Legion of Skanks. How can oh, I yeah. forget that? They're there and they have a whole legion of, of fans that come in and stuff. So it's more supportive, I think, at the stand. Mm -hmm. But but I'm still fascinated by, the, one of the most difficult things, because I've been thinking about languages a lot lately, is when you know, you're know you in a room with, say, three or four people and they start, in their native tongue, saying things that they think are funny and start to sort of, you, you see the laughter start to emerge. Mm -hmm. I would say eight times out of 10, I can't figure out what's going on. And and because I think there's nothing more difficult than getting humor in another language, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. it, you just study it and you just do it. It just you, you just get good at it like anything else. I would love to have a good answer for you, but I don't. You, 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 I just. It um, seems like did you was, was it a challenge for you at the beginning? You just sort of just I, zoomed into it. I think the thing that I love the most is improv. Uh, what is harder for me is to write, to actually sit down and write. Got it. But I'm very good like reading a room and being able to do something with that interesting do yeah. you also do comedy in portuguese i did it last time i was in portugal yeah and what part of portugal are you from algarve which is the south so i was in um lisbon lisboa oh yeah uh, perfect like a month ago mm -hmm. and very interesting lovely people beyond mm -hmm. right and same thing with spain and portugal kind of to get a similar feeling about at least lisbon and madrid i had a similar feeling about but one of the things i'm going to say something that's going to be way PC problem. But okay. Here we go. Uh, you, I just want you to explain this to me. Okay. So the, <laughs> I'm kind the, of... the, 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 nobody has a more horrific history as it pertains to the African slave trade mm -hmm. and what they did to us, the South American indigenous people than Spain and Portugal. Mm -hmm. I mean, like just horrific mm -hmm. and they acknowledge it. They own it. They feel bad about it. And then they move on <laughs> and they go, yeah. and we love our food. We love our culture. We love our yeah. people. It's how we got here. We wouldn't choose to get here this way, but it's how we got here. Anyway, let's have dinner. I, and to me as an American, you're, we're, we're stricken by that stuff. Yeah. And I found it odd and I don't know, encouraging, like maybe we could get past our shit too, yeah. but tell me what that is. Is that, do they, is it worse than it looked on the surface or, or do they ignore it or what, 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 what was that? I don't, to be honest with you, it's kind of complicated because if you lived in Portugal for a little bit, for example, I was born I was born and raised in a very strict household. And sometimes I was a chef. Yeah, my dad is, is a chef. Thank you, he chef. still is. Thank yes. You, chef. <laughs> um and the thing is that when I talk about my childhood, people are like, Oh my god, that's so traumatizing. Like your dad used to beat you up with a belt. Uh -oh. That's yeah. But I don't feel like that. Yeah, I know. I don't but feel trauma I never feels like it. I feel like at the time, like he did what thought it was best with the best that he knew. Yeah. And that's what I think about my ancestors. I don't think they were like, I'm going to come over here and steal all this shit from you. And you're going to learn Portuguese. And here's Christianism and all this shit. Like they thought that's what they had to do. And it's not right. Well, but and it is and there's it even is. a more um, clement way of looking at it, which is in the overwhelming probability. Yeah. If you were in one of those galleys, you would have done the same thing at the time because you would have been of your time. Yeah. You wouldn't have been able to step out of yourself. And I would have been a colonizer. That's you would, what you, would, you want you, me to say. You, you would have been a colonizer or you would have at least supported the queen's efforts yes. to colonize, yeah. right? Because the, you because you would not have been able to step out of your time and go, hey, that's pretty shitty. What are we doing? Or it would have been very hard to do that. Or very yeah. few people would have. In fact, you probably would have been arrested if you spoke up about yeah. it. So did you see the, uh, the dictator that was in Portugal, Salazar? I don't know that. Do know right. that? I know about Franco, but I don't know about... Do you want to talk about it? No. Sure. Tell me. Okay. So because it feels like both those countries had these civil wars and dictators and things yeah. that kind of flattened everything a little bit. Yeah. So this guy, he actually was able to raise the most money for Portugal that we ever had. Mm. But he had this thing that you can talk against the government. Can't. can't you cannot. couldn't. You mm. can. Yeah. Sometimes I will say things wrong in English because I learned my English from Cartoon Network. So just, just it's so, a, it's a so, little charm, okay? So it is charming, but, but uh, it's sort of the, the thought that, uh, <laughs> what's that kid, that laboratory show that uh, 
Oh, well, anyway. The, Which one? Dexter's, the, Dexter's, Dexter's Laboratory yeah, or the fa- Fairly Godparents yeah. or Fairly whatever it was got, got you your English. That's awesome. That's true. Anyway, so... <laughs> so a kid with a, a cartoon with a kid with a very fake accent is what taught you English. That's fantastic. Yes. Um, it was more the hunter from Bugs Bunny. Oh, so Elmer Fudd. Yeah. Interesting. I, That's I actually old have a school. speech impairment. I cannot say the R's in certain words. And in Portuguese, I can't. Because you, you guys roll your R's, don't you? Yeah. Abogado. Abogado. Yeah. 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 It's really bad, especially because I'm from the South and you have a very, we have a very strong, thick accent. Uh-huh. But the way I speak, it's like, it's weird. Mm. I don't know. But definitely moving to America made it worse. Hmm. But anyway, what were you talking about? The dictator. Yeah, the dictator. The dictator. Yeah. So there would be these underground, like, torture chambers, and anybody that was against the government, and if they knew, like, they would put them there and all this stuff. So people were basically, it was all about fear. Like mm-hmm. in controlling people. That's how dictators do it. Right? Yeah. And I think that's how it was with colonialism as well, which is awful. But I have to say this um, Portugal, it's very old school. Uh, not until a long time ago, people learn about how can I say this without sounding awful? They learn about the psychology and how it is important to talk about feelings and things like that. People don't actually talk about, like my mom she would say awful shit to me and then never apologize mm. until last year in September when I went home, she was like, Oh, I'm sorry about anything. And she kept saying, sorry, sorry about that. Because tr- now I sorry. left. I haven't been home for like 10 years. Sorry That's about why. your childhood. Yeah. Sorry. I beat your ass and made me, made you feel like you were adopted. Did but, you, do you have siblings? <laughs> because you were doomed for a career in comedy. It's obvious. Dude, do you so. know the worst torture ever? Mm, I had please. a little mustache. I was smaller than all the other kids. Okay. And I had short black hair cause my mom would cut my hair short. And I had a little mustache and I looked like Super Mario, okay? <laughs> and like my mom, she would not, I would, I would be like crying, please, please let me wax this. Like I feel so bad. And then one day my dad gave me like $5. He's like, go, go wax that shit off. Yeah, that looks awful. <laughs> so <laughs> I went to this like hairdresser, right? And everybody, I'm like from a small town. So everybody knew who I was and my mom and all this stuff. And they're like, oh, you were like sound, sound daughter. Oh, she was so scared that you were gonna die in her belly. She had you at like 42. It was very late. You were an accident. You were an accident. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I figured. Anyway, I'm I here to take to, my mustache I off. I got to do stand-up. <laughs> I got to go do stand-up right away. <laughs> God. And then I got home with all this super red. And she was like, how are you? you okay? I'm like, yeah, everything's fine. <laughs> and she's like, show me your face. I'm like, no, what? And she goes, show me your face. I'm like, I have something to do upstairs. She's like, show me your face. And she saw that. I got slapped right there and then in front of everybody in my dad's restaurant. She doesn't give a shit. How many, do you have siblings? Yeah, I have an older brother. How's he doing? He's a pussy. He's a pussy? No, no, I'm not, he's a... (laughs) What makes someone a pussy? Because he, I think he's, he, like my parents have this way... I'm talking awfully awful of my parents. I meant no, they're very like people in this country talk about school. their parents that way all the time. You you at least okay. dismiss them as old school or at um, least defend I, them. That's my excuse for yes, them. Yeah, I understand. So it defends a lot of shitty behavior. They take, it's all right. Like if you say you want to do something or whatever you do, like they take all, they suck that energy out of you, and they're like, no, don't do it because uh, oh, you don't want to be an actress. It's very difficult. Yeah, they get and all this stuff. You don't want that. So yeah, so he always follow whatever they wanted. So, I see. So so. A pussy is somebody who doesn't stand up for themselves. No, I think he did stand up for himself, but the, the, what happened was he stopped believing in, him, in himself. So now he's 43 and my parents still help him pay his bills oh, and all yeah. that stuff. That's not so uncommon and he has in two millennials. Kids. Ooh. Yeah, and he has a girlfriend. <sighs> and he's like kind of like, my parents are always there to help him for whatever he needs. Mm. And with me, it wasn't like that. Mm. So like he has, he's like the golden child. I'm like the black sheep of the family. I see. I knew that when I first met you. Yeah. And, and so you're pissed. I'm extremely jealous. Yeah. So yeah. we're going to just talk shit about him in the meantime. Well, I still love him, you know, but whatever. But, but he's a pussy. So, so, <laughs> so what, what makes someone a pussy? Not, not your brother so much, but just generally. What makes I think it? is when somebody lets the fear take control of them. You know what I mean? When they can't take risk, when they can't uh, put themselves it, out there. I understand that that's a pretty scary thing to do, but it's like when you, there's a bad, there's a, something that really worries me about pussies. Pussies? Yeah, you P- said, it's pussies. correct. You did yep, it. You yep. said it right. Is that sometimes they become bullies 
You know oh, what I mean? Interesting. So, so, and it can flip back and forth. So that's right? the worst type of pussy. Yeah. Yes. Okay. The pussy is a bully. I think we'd all agree with you on that. Yeah. And, and <laughs> <laughs> so, one of the places, one of the ways that uh, trauma, which mm-hmm. you're kind of discussing, manifests is interpersonally. That's where it really has a, has it can affect people. How your relationships been? I think mostly I I can talk for myself. Like I'm a very intense person. And I treat every relationship I have like a marriage and not everybody can take that. I'm what, very, what does that mean? Well, I don't really like people very much. Um, <laughs> but when I do, I'm very attached. I think I have um, codependency a little bit. Mm-hmm. Or some attachment trauma. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. So like my best friend, I she's in Portugal. I call her every day, sometimes like three times a day. Mm. And she's like, I'm busy. And I'm like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I'm like, call me. <laughs> do, do you get I, get? I get mad with my friends, like especially back home in Portugal. I was not able to form any type of relationship like that. Close relationships. Here, yeah. Um, but my my friend Veda, she's like, oh, I don't have time to call you. I'm so busy. I'm like, do you have time to take a shit? She says, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, call me when you take a shit. And she does. She does. So That's what you call a shitty relationship. Yeah. So, so I, I'm guessing you get kind of aggressive in relationships. Yeah, I am a little bit aggressive. I don't like saying aggressive. Like you Americans call it aggressive. <laughs> I call it passionate. Passionate. Yeah. And how you express love. Yeah. With your hands? Sometimes. No. Sometimes. No, I do like acts of service. Like I like cooking. I will cook for you. Like maybe like if I go to my girl, for example, I sit at, the girl, at this girl's house in New York. Mm. And she was like, she forced me to be there. She's like, stay with me. Like, there's no problem. I said, look, I have a big problem, actually. I have. I don't like people. I don't like being close to them. As well. But I have OCD, which means it, if, if I'm in a room and something is dirty, yes. I will clean it. Yes. Because I, I can't. Mm-hmm. It's like crazy. Okay. And she goes, I got OCD too. She didn't. She was. Filthy. <sighs> she was filthy. I what was like. Bitch. What a bitch. I'm like, do you know that this is a mental disease? It's like. She, I, I ordered, gro- I ordered groceries. I cleaned her whole apartment, and I'm like, I was pissed. I was like, Do you see how much time you made me waste? She had dried piss on the floor. Do, I'm like, a- Do you have a or, dick? Or, or, don't just sit on the toilet. I, I feel you. Yeah, thank you. And and, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Interesting. Uh, I have a lot of problems, right, Dr. Drew? Uh, I don't know. Do you? I don't know. I kind of feel a bit crazy right now. <laughs> Just as we talk about this stuff? Yeah. Dr. Drew After Dark is sponsored by BetterHelp. And of course, when you are at your best, you can really tackle so much in life. And working with a therapist can help you get closer to the best version of you. When you're empowered, you're more likely to be able to handle stressors in a flexible way. You know I'm a fan of therapy, been referring people, family, friends, patients, very pleased with the services they provide. And um, no longer any stigma or excuses. If you say you're embarrassed, you're not going to run anybody in a waiting room or anything because this is all completely online. So if you are thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, flexible, affordable, and I said entirely online. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. Switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can help get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash afterdark today to get 10% off your first month. That is better help, H-E-L-P, better, H-E-L-P dot com slash afterdark. Well, it's interesting. Uh, I admire your aggressiveness. Okay, or your, your passionateness. Thank you. Thank you for that. I, I think you should feel good about it, except when it goes off the rail. I don't shout or anything. I know people assume that I'm very like that, but I get very quiet. And oh, yeah. that's the worst. Withholding, yeah. How, yeah. Long, how long does that go for? I don't know. I mean, you do it for days? No, like, you mean like silent the treatment? The silent treatment, yeah. No, no. I just get very like, I don't say anything. I get a little bit like sad maybe. Mm. And I dwell on things a lot. Mm. So then like I try to go to the gym and if it's really bad, I will smoke cigarettes. Ooh. <sighs> it's disgusting. But um, yeah, but I, but I don't shout. I don't do that. Yeah. And I don't have relationships even with friends with people that shout at me. Like I don't do that. If you were a chef like your father, mm-hmm. would you be one of those chefs that yells at people and throws stuff around that kind of thing? 
or would you be just or like like sort of sort of withholding and, and so seething? You know, I am a little bit more passive aggressive. Mm. For example, if somebody said something to me or asked me a stupid question, I would be like, "Do you hear yourself?" <laughs> I would say stuff like that. that but, that's not passive aggressive. That's just aggressive aggressive. Yeah, okay. It's passionate, Dr. <laughs> passionate, Drew. Passionate aggressive. I'm sorry. You're right. Passionate. Passionate. You love cooking. But um, does, that, does that come through on your podcast? It's not a podcast. So I it's mean, a, YouTube? Whatever. I do videos. I only yeah. put one on YouTube. Um, I put it on Patreon because I need money. And yeah. And that's it. So I think like I try to entertain people and I try to make it look like you're there with me and I'm cooking for you. Yes. Yeah. Do you, um, so the, I'm thinking about your smoking and how you mm -hmm. get through some of your stress stuff. Do you worry that you work out excessively? Like you have exercise bulimia or something? You mentioned going to the gym when you have stress. Yeah. I mean, not really because at the same time I'm lazy, so I don't really push myself. So it's not like that's an excessive thing for you. No, no. Tell us something about you know, how you perceive us as Americans. You know, I, I had that little perception about the Portuguese. And I, was, well, I, found it, I found it confusing and endearing so, at the same so time. So let me just get this straight. You yeah. find that Portuguese are proud of being colonizers. No, it wasn't that. They just don't take it very seriously. Th they were proud of who they are now. Yeah. And they love their people and their culture mm -hmm. and their language. They're very patriotic. Yeah. yeah. And, and they are ashamed of that past, mm -hmm. but they accept it and they move on. Uh, and then sort of that was sort of it felt like their love of their culture in the present moment was clear. Yeah. Like it was just, that's it, that we love it. Okay. And here we're very conflicted. So I'm going to answer your question with saying how I feel about being Portuguese and talking about the Americans. Okay. I like, the thing that I like about Portuguese people is that, for example, they will meet you, they will meet you like at the bus stop or whatever, and you have a good conversation, yes. and they're like, hey, do you wanna come to my house and have dinner with and, my family? And, and Europeans are more that way generally, yeah. you know, especially the South. Yeah, yeah and that's right? okay. Yeah. And something I've noticed that I actually, I thought, oh, thank God, like now I'm in America, I don't have like to kiss people on the face, I don't have like- You hate people after all. <sighs> yeah, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't have to do any of that. And you know what? I miss it so much. And it was very hard for me because sometimes if I had one glass too much to drink, uh, I would do that because I would be like, oh my God, it's nice to see you. And people would be like, mm, she's yeah. kind of hitting on me or something. Yes, and people I didn't, don't know what to do. Yeah. So I miss that a lot. Mm. And I miss like physical touch without having to be sexual. Just like, like, hey, like for example, Portuguese will touch your hand as you know, or your arm to say, I hear you. Like, you know, yeah, we're talking between men and women, particularly. Yeah, yeah. just it yes. doesn't mean anything, yes. you know, and I do like that Portuguese. They were such a little country and they were so ambitious when it comes to like traveling because they would be saying, oh, I have a, a very. OK, I'll, I'll I'll continue. Sorry. See, I'm not thinking. Um, Are you talking about the little country where they used to travel down the coast of Africa and into South no, America so traveling or for, recently traveling? No, no, no. Like back in the day. Back in the day, so, yes. No, they, they, they yeah. exerted themselves on, mm -hmm. upon the world. They, yeah, wanted, exactly. they, they were the explorers. They and were they it. were like uh, legends of, oh, there's like a sea monster and stuff like that. Yeah. And they would go, okay, let's, let's see what's going on. Yeah. And I, I admired that. Courageous, courageous. Yes. yes. So do you know how back in the day they uh, said that there would be like sea monsters. Yes. And then a study came out that when whales have sex, they usually have threesomes. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, where well, there's happened. one female and two males, so there's more chance of her getting pregnant. Ah, good for them. Yeah, and while the other male is waiting, he will flap his dick out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and oh, that's that it, was the sea monster. And that was a sea monster. That was what it looks like a tentacle, but it's a whale's dick. Wow. Yeah. Wow, what a, what a great Portuguese insight. Yeah. The sea monsters of the <laughs> days of yore and the the sailors that reported were really whales dicks. admiring whales dicks. Yeah. Mm, that's good. Yeah. I like that. It makes sense too. I'm mean, sure it was all kinds of misperceptions like that. Yeah, for sure. So is it, I'm guessing a, oh, we're going to see it here. Oh, well, that's yeah, now we're looking at Loch Ness monster. It does look kind of like a whale dick right there. Thing. Yeah. Now, now can you Google dick. whale dick? Yeah, please. Blue whale dick, especially. Or was it sperm whales? What kind of whales were they? I have no days? idea. Yeah. Oh, oh see, then it look like oh, a sea there monster. It is over look. there. Yes, on the Absolutely. right. Absolutely. Look at that. Yeah. Oh my God, I've learned something today. Exactly. I'm so glad I teach you something. Nasia, Dr. thank you. Of yeah, course. really. This is an insight. Uh, yeah. <laughs> whales dicks look like sea monsters, and uh, whales have threesomes, and and I think they have like a bone in their penis too. Right? Isn't that what that guy's they holding do? in the left upper corner? Looks kind of like Chad holding a whale dick. 
Yeah. No. Oh, oh wow. no, it doesn't. I, I, I beg your pardon. It doesn't. What are you it doesn't. About? It doesn't. It doesn't. I, I beg your pardon. For look, I'm a, I'm six feet, twenty feet away from this thing. I beg your pardon. I, I thought it was going to look like you only welding. Like it looks nothing like you. You're correct. You were correct, sir. These guys are sensitive. Okay. Yeah, you have to be Woo. careful. You never know with men. Wow, it's true. So. um I didn't, I'm not sure I still quite heard what you, though, think about Americans. I, mean, I just it, feel, okay, you're right, sorry. Sometimes uh, I just go on my own way. And, I, I'll follow you. Um, I love Americans, of course. Uh, I just feel like sometimes you guys are very polite and diplomatic, and you don't say what you mean. Most of the time. And, and I feel, and that's why you see me as being aggressive, because I say what I mean. Because I, and you're aggressive. I believe passionate, <laughs> passionate. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. You're right. You're correct. I, we're usually not not passionate, right? So you are passionate. So, yes. And I keep mistaking that for aggressive. And so here, okay. write it down. Okay, you're right. I'll write it down. <laughs> write it down. I will do that. <laughs> and I told you I admire it, and I'm not. I'm not kidding. Okay, good. No, I think. I think. By the way, that's an interesting topic. I think some men are sort of. They, they have it, conflicted feelings about mm -hmm. women who are passionate. <laughs> I don't. I, 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 I admire it. I, I think it's attractive. I have no problem with it. I, I, I worry it goes off the rail. And that's why I was sort of, you know, anybody that has those kinds of intense feelings yeah. and dramatic I, history I understand. and stuff, things I actually, can go off the rail. And you have to be careful with that. I understand that. I feel like people who are like that and they have problems uh, holding their anger, they have problems. They are immature. Like, I don't believe in expressing yourself in an intimidating manner. Because when yeah. you shout, that means you can't communicate. No. And you're trying to uh, intimidate somebody else. And I don't believe in that. Right. Of course. And you know what? I'm, there's a little comedy embedded in what you just said, I think. And correct me if I'm wrong. That, um, you know, <laughs> I see things in sort of through psychological process. And you see things as they're just either they're assholes or they're immature. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Pretty straight. Yeah. I think like people who like try to intimidate others are just immature. scared and immature. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, you're weak. Just like I think of people. Yeah, you you are weak ass bitch. Okay. Like I I don't like bullies. All goes bullies. to weak and pussy. Weak pussy, immature. Yeah, I don't like I don't like. The world's got to be simpler that way. Yeah. Yeah. Am I wrong? Um, you're not wrong, but but I'm not right, huh? <laughs> it, it's it is a How again. I admire it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little bit harsh way to look at the world. A and yeah. it's a little bit, um, the categories are broad. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and people are a little more complicated than that. But, I, but I'm, I'm going to say something that I don't mean to sound bad. But I, Too late. I, I'm going to say it. And it's not, because I don't think you're interested in that. You're not interested yeah. in it because you don't, you're not that interested in people. You're interested in people you like and want to be around yeah. and the rest of them, they're weak for, and immature. For example, let me, let me tell I'm, you something. See, I love people. I'm very interested yeah. in people. And so to me, I'm, I'm fascinated by the okay. nuances and the tiniest little thing. Not your thing. No. It doesn't have to be everybody's thing. No. This is the thing. I'm, I, when I say I don't like people, I mean it in, I mean it in a sense that I'm very uh, transparent, mm -hmm. but I know I know when to be diplomatic. But it's not like I'm going to tell somebody I don't like them. I would never do that. I'll just ghost them. But no, I'll just like no, you know. You're you're not abusive. Yeah, let's say you're not, you're not interested in hurting other people unless they're pussies. Yeah. No, even pussies. I'm, I'll just let pussies be pussies, you know? Mm. Just, again, not in your... You get away from them. You yes. Get around them. So, for example, I'm going to talk about somebody that you had here. Okay. I'm, I met Jade. Jade. Love her. Yes. We get along very well. And I just... Because we get along so well, for me, everything she does, it's funny. And I, like, we did a show together. I was the one laughing there the most. Like, because I, I just think she's so smart and witty in the way she moves and the way she acts. And her energy is so good. Yes. And I want to be around that. Yes. Sometimes when there's people that they don't know how to communicate, to communicate and they just like shout and scream, I don't want to be around that because I feel like if I submit myself to that, sooner or later, I'm going to be like that. Mm. And I am trying to become a better person. Yeah. Not Which is what we're all trying yeah. to do, right? Like make a difference, be better. I just am thinking it'd be so fun. You guys correct me if this is not true, but to go out drinking with Jade and, and uh, Nasia, that'd be so fun. Yep. Yeah, that would be a riot. Then we have to go. All right, done. That, that's one of my goals for going forward. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to... Wait, I have one more question. Please. Can I say something? Absolutely. Um, this, we're going to be here two hours. Um, so 
this was a very American thing of you, actually. Mm, yes. Because all Americans assume that I'm very aggressive. Passionate. How dare you? There you go. Well, why, do you, why did you felt like that about me in the sense that you felt like... I didn't feel like I that would, at the beginning. I, no? I, I was something... I, well, here's sort of how my thinking went. I, I, you were clear about your history and the trauma and stuff like that. And that tends to create some unregulated aggression. Yeah. And uh, we started talking about romantic relationships. And I was wrong about how you expressed it. You, you do it by withholding, by closing mm -hmm. down and stuff. But, I mean, it's sort of aggressive. It's aggressive to do that <laughs> okay. stuff. And, uh, and it's, you know, passionate people. It's all good. It's okay. all good. I, all right. I, like, because I like people, I like all the kind of versions of people. I don't like, I like that. And, and, and as you've been very clear, you're not interested in hurting other people or abusing no. other people. That's not your thing. And I, I think you're fascinating. Oh, thank you. Yeah. That's a big compliment. Yeah. I appreciate that. All right. So, and I, and I made it. So let's go to some uh, voice messages. You know how oh this works. Yes. You're, you're going to help some people. Okay, let's okay, help this people. This is your chance. I know you don't, you're not, you're not, to say you don't like people is not right. I feel like you don't have time for certain people. Right? Yeah. You just don't have I want to be inspired, them. you know? Yeah. You want to be around things that, make um, you f that you like. Yes. And I feel like everyone that calls you and sends your emails, it's 15 year old horny teenagers. You mentioned that. It's okay. I'll get this. Uh, 15 year old horny teenagers. But, but uh, so I used to do a show called Love Line before you were born. And it, it started really as a show about AIDS because we were in the middle of the AIDS pandemic then, okay. and people were not talking to young people about it. And I had a chance to go on the radio and start talking mm -hmm. about it. And it, became you know young people talking about they had nowhere to go back then there was no internet or anything like that okay and it became horny adolescence which is all adolescence right mm -hmm. trying to figure out what the hell's going on and what we found and what tends to happen here too is um men are very preoccupied with their penis yeah and, and are they normal i would be too if i had one would you no no <laughs> and, and and then and then women tend to be very confused about men so everyone's calling about the men at Loveline. It was sort of a lot of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of sort of medical biology and stuff. This show is sort of a new incarnation of that, right? So it's mm -hmm. going to be the horny adolescence again in here. And, but what's so interesting to me about this show is that they're, they have a million places to get information now. And mm -hmm. they're still confused. I think they just want your attention. Uh, yeah. But they, you, where do you see the qu They really are confused. They are? Yeah, you'll see. Let's, let's get some okay. voice messages here. Okay. Hi, Daddy. My name is Taylor from Shithole, Reading, Pennsylvania. Just got a quick question. I've been working third shift for about five years now, and I seem to have created some kind of sun allergy for myself. Every time I go into the sun, I get a really bad rash, mm. and my eyes are really sensitive, and I get a headache. I can't wow. spend more than 30 minutes in the sun without you know, getting affected by all this. Just wanted to know if this is normal. Uh, piss on me, beat me. Love you, any. You're my man. And uh, yeah, bye bye. I bet he's a ginger. He could be a ginger or Norwegian. Really yeah. white, super white. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, gingers tend to be very sensitive to the sun. But there's something in the, a quality in what he described that uh, you look guilty for calling him a ginger. It's okay. Ginger's okay. Okay, thank you. You're right? Okay. Yeah, I, I thought you, about you, it afterwards. You, you looked at me like, <laughs> was that okay? Yeah, ginger's fine. Okay. Uh, that uh, and Ginger's a whole interesting kind of genetic group of stuff too. They're very interesting people, but he is describing sun sensitivity that makes me concerned. Mm -hmm. There's something called um, lupus dermatitis or lupus. You can get actually a lupus of the skin, and it's activated by sun typically, and there can be systemic reactions. So the headache and the photophobia oh, wow. and all that stuff. So it makes me worried that he either has actual lupus or at least the lupus skin disorder, and so he should see a dermatologist about that. So, yeah, go see a dermatologist, so Ginger. All right. Yeah. Correct. You have amazing skin, by the way. A very wow. kind of you to say. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm jealous. Look, look at you. No, I have five kilos of makeup on my face. That's why. And, <laughs> here we go. Kilos. Hey, Dr. Hitler. It's Ryan. I, uh, I The past few days, I was pretty sick. I had a high fever, like really congested, um, you know, coughing, uh, headache and all that stuff. And so the past couple of days, I've been, you know, lying in bed, drinking lots of fluids, not really moving too much, just trying to take care of myself. And I'm a fitness instructor, and I couldn't get out of teaching these two particular classes. So uh -oh. I had to go in, and uh, I, you know, I put a mask on, and I taught two one-hour classes, essentially. Like, uh, and I got out, 
And leaving class, I felt like 50% better as opposed to just, you know, staying in and, you know, not moving too much, trying to take care of myself. Um, what do you think's going on there, the resting as opposed to, uh, you know, bit, a lot of exercise while you're sick? Thank you. Yeah. Want a chocolate? You're the doctor. Okay, good. So, <laughs> so fair enough. You have good judgment, too. Uh, so... You know, he wasn't that sick. I mean, when you're really sick, you can't get out of bed. And as you get older, there'll be more of that, trust me. Uh, I am actually a fan of low-level activity when you're moderately ill. I think people can do more than they think they can. And whether it helps get over it or not, it certainly helps you feel a little better. You have to kind of listen to your body with things like that. I, I, and of course, you know, the problem of exposing other people, and this could have easily been COVID you had. I mean, who knows? But yeah. I, if you want to get up on a treadmill and do a little light lifting and stuff and you're by yourself, cool. Expose other people, not so cool. So how do you feel about women working out when they have their periods? Because I've been reading it's bad because it raises your cortisol levels. Mm, I don't think it should be a problem. No. Uh, to me, who, what kind of... I've been uh, seeing it in a very safe uh, space called TikTok. Oh, of course, yes. Yeah. Uh, no, not just a safe space, but an encyclopedia, medical yeah. journal, oh, TikTok, yes, <laughs> where we, we get all of our medical information. No, I would think exercise would be good. You want to increase yeah. the blood supply and blood flow and kind of get, it, things, get out. things going. Oh, yeah. okay. Get things going. Well, Plus, when you have all that, you know, you can be you can be congested and you can feel pain. And stuff. The yeah. exercise, I think, would help that, if anything. Yes, I can't use that excuse so, anymore. No, sorry. Okay. Okay. Next. Hi, Dr. Mommy. I have a question. It's not about my butthole. It is a question about the appetite suppressants that you mentioned. Oh. I am 29, and I've always been overweight, and I feel like food just has control over me. Mm. And the only time I feel like... I didn't really have an appetite was when I was pregnant with my daughter and the whole pregnancy just like food didn't have control over me and I just I didn't have those issues and I'm wondering like are these appetite suppressants something like I should ask my doctor about like what are the side effects yeah it's, and it's... is there like a pin for it like is there any way to get it easily or is it something that should be kind of looked at with concern Thank you for all your help. Bye, Hitler. Bye. <clears throat> it's greetings here at your mom's house. And I like the way Nasi looks. I'm like, okay, smart guy. Answer that. No, uh, I mean, I was just going to say that sometimes I, I have a lot of appetite. And I want to eat. Do you say appetite, Ralph? Yes, that? yes, that's right. And I want to eat. Like, I eat like a man. I mm -hmm. eat a lot. And I'm not shamed. Like, I eat You're like, fine. I eat like I just got out of jail. You never <laughs> no, I ate. I went to have lunch with Jade. And she was like, where did all this food go? And I'm like, in my tummy, Jake. You, how lucky for you. No, but... As long as you're not throwing up afterwards or No, something. no, I'll eat like... I don't even breathe. Um, I think sometimes we just need... To, like, that's normal with women because of hormones and stuff. And just What's stress. What's normal with women? What is? Just to feel like, oh, I, I have a lot of appetite right now. Like, I want to eat. Yeah, but she's overweight, too. Oh, she's overweight? Yeah. Then maybe we can just... I don't know. I'm not Dr. Drew, but... You're, you're, what, you're what entitled off your opinion, please. Yeah. What I do is like... I eat, I try to research of like healthy snacks mm. and I try to eat in quantity, of course, like I eat as much as I want, but I eat healthy stuff like cucumbers with salt or like hummus or like whatever, or like salmon, like sashimi. Like I try to be as healthy as I can. Yeah. So, so there's a lot in what you're saying, right? Yeah. Is that we, we can actually eat more than we think we can if you're eating the right stuff. Now, mm -hmm. everybody's biology is kind of different. Yeah. Like for me, if I put any starch in, I'm screwed. Yeah. Uh, I have what a happens? lot of, I, I'll, I'll gain weight, farts. I'll farts, whatever. I just have yeah. insulin resistance. It's just not, starch clearly is my sort of enemy. And so is okay. sugar. Uh, but but you may be able to take a certain amount of that, no problem, and balance it in with everything else. So you got to kind of assess your own biology. But a lot of people don't don't really think about appetite management. I mean, our appetite. If some people feel like if they're hungry, somehow they're <gasps> they have to eat. No, yeah. we're we're designed to be hungry all the time, essentially. Yeah. And hunger is not a bad thing. And sort of eating every eating when you're hungry is one thing, but being fearful of hunger is another. Mm -hmm. Right. So yes, you eat when you're hungry, but you don't have to be deadly full and you don't have to run to food every time you have the slightest pang of hunger. So there's that. What she's talking about is that, you know, some people have a different set point for their appetite and satiation, right? And there is a new class of medication we use to treat diabetes. These sort of these what are called GLP-1 or glucagon agonist 
they're they're you know you got, got to remember on this direction to her medicines are always dangerous understand yeah. that any medicine dangerous much better you do it the way nasia is telling you to do it much better pick a pick a figure out what kind of balance works for you and diet and go with that and eat you know it's just really a matter of eating consciously half the time mm -hmm. right just being aware as you eat now you know it's it's hard sometimes you get going with certain things i know i certainly do but if you get back on track, you can be satiated. You can feel good about it. You're, you generally won't you won't get fat that way. You may not be your ideal weight, maybe, yeah. but you can certainly do fine. These medicines work. They do yeah. work. They you significantly know, reduce appetite. You know what really appetite. works too? Depression. Depression does work yeah. too. Yeah, pregnancy works too. It'll change. You know, yeah. It's a, the, <laughs> and and it's, do you have a history of depression yourself? I don't know. I mean, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't realize like I had OCD and ADHD until I got here, and then I hear everybody talking about it, and I talk with my therapist, and I, I was don't like, think oh, you have shit. ADHD. I do not you experience so? you. Mm, I get the OCD part, and sometimes I can look like ADD or ADHD, but I, you're, you you're, so? you're, you, hey, people with ADD have trouble focusing. I know you meander a little bit. I'm trying very hard right now. Dr. You meander, Turtle. but but I, the thing I notice most about ADHD is they they can't shift from idea to idea. They get stuck on something, and you try to get their attention, and they just they can't. And then they have to go over here, and then they left this behind. And that's sort of more you you meander. Your thinking meanders, but mm -hmm. I don't think that's ADD. No. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes me feel better about myself. Thank I you. I think it's being passionate. I think that's what that is. But but OCD, I get that. I get yeah. that. And that again. Whatever. I mean, th these all can be assets and liabilities, right? Yeah, I agree. So back to the GLP-1 inhibitor or agonist. Uh, they do work. They work like crazy. They're not without their risk. And I've noticed a lot of stories lately about, I've not prescribed them for weight loss, um, but I have talked to people who feel very good about having been on them and lost weight. I've noticed we're starting to hear stories now about people getting a rebound afterwards. Like, like with every restrictive diet, your body compensates for that, and they're actually gaining weight beyond the weight they were before they started the medication. So be careful. Much, much better diet and exercise. Mm -hmm. Living a certain kind of life is much better. Voice message. Hi, Hitler. It's me, Ryan. I'm calling from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, uh, originally hailing from Davie, Florida. So what's up there, Chomo? Um, I'm a local truck driver, and recently on this trucker community board I'm a part of, there was a discussion about the personal hygiene of other drivers, uh, mainly some of the over-the-road, long-haul uh, truck driver guys. The group came to a conclusion, and the words smell like a bakery came into play. So women, on I think. behalf of all the scientifically minded, is it possible for even men to get a yeast infection oh. inside their asshole <laughs> from lack of showering and or lack of showering properly? Anyways, this is Captain Marcel signing out. I'm going down, down into the mountain. All right, buddy. What do you say? Well, first of all, men don't really shower properly ever. Oh, really? Yeah. What would be a proper shower? Like, what, what are we missing? What are we doing wrong? I feel like, so here in America, you have those shower heads up here. Yeah, yeah. And like me personally, I have to turn my back and spread my butt cheeks. Yes, and yes. I make sure it's clean. They don't do that. They just let the water run. And, and, and I've noticed, well, certainly in, in my own house, we, a lot more of this kind of sh yes. shower head is showing up in American showers these days. And it is a different thing when you put yeah. that back there. It's, it's, yeah. it certainly, certainly gets the soap out that might yeah. not have gotten out, right? Everybody should have a bidet. Well, interesting. We were just talking about this on another show, how in some cultures you're not allowed to touch your asshole with anything. With just the left? The, oh, only the left did, hand? Did, I lived in Middle East. Did you know what they do there? I, I know they, they have very, a lot of issues about that yeah and what is their deal so they don't use toilet paper but everywhere even like in um, malls they have a um, like a water a spray. jet yeah. yeah i thought that was a, very th strong you can make a hole in the wall with that jet I, I, I know and i thought it was to sort of be i thought it was to put in the toilet water to flush the toilet i thought so too it's to put up your asshole not up but close well it's going up your asshole with that yeah. kind of force you're right it's like, it it's might like touch your liver with that type of force yes yes so so what it is uh, back in the day when they lived in the desert and stuff, yes. well, they still live in the desert with like camped and stuff. Yes. They use the hand, this right hand to eat and the left hand to clean their butthole. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. You notice how she says butthole, even this young lady with passion says butthole. Yeah. So, yeah, well, there you go. And and I know a lot of them still have even, like they won't touch the butthole at all. Yeah. They, they insist on just using the bidet. Yeah. I have a suggestion after you answer this to this guy so he can well, uh, clean ahead. his go butthole ahead. On, go ahead. while traveling. Go ahead. So on Amazon, there's these little packages of like there's this little 
um, plastic bottles and they have like a little thing like this. I don't know I the name. I think we call them English. a douche. No, it's not a douche. Not a douche. I've seen a, du I've seen a douche on the floor in LA once, but it's like a bottle like this and it just have a thing and you just like squeeze it yes. and you wash your butt. Enema. Call that an enema. Is that an enema? There are enema bottles that have like, they have sort of, you don't have to put the nozzle up your butt. That's but no, you don't have to put it up. Let's see. Look. See that? Is that what you're talking about? Is that what they use for pregnant ladies? It's, oh, it's like that bottle over there with the green thing. The green thing, yeah, right in the middle. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that's a that's a Fleet's enema, <laughs> but uh, but yes, that Just, will also clean the outside as well. Yeah, it's a it's a large volume of fluid. So you have no excuse to have a dirty butthole. So the question though was, could it taste? Could it smell like yeast? And could it smell like he said, a, smell like a bakery? Smell like a you know. It's a, Since it, when bakery smells like shit? I don't get they that. No, he's saying they smell like yeast, like like mm. breaking bread. And I don't know what he's talking about. I, I, somebody told me once that women could get Canada from working in a bakery. And I, I objected. I said, no, come on. I looked it up. It happens. <gasps> that, you, that the yeast can get into all. And they men, sit on the flour? No, it just sort of, it sort of you know, <laughs> colonizes them, I guess. They just on their hands or whatever. And uh, men can get yeast on their skin too. And it can go into their sort of cracks, certainly in their groin for wow. sure. And so maybe, maybe there's something there. So maybe. anyway. Take, can you send us a picture? No. I'm take Nasia's <laughs> advice on how to stay clean. My husband and I were having sex in the shower, decided to be romantic, started washing his body. He, body. he soaped my butt, butthole. I was immediately furious because it burned. So he went too far in, evidently. Maybe it was a peppermint shower gel. Doesn't have to be. If you, oh. if you go in, it, it, soap can irritate. Okay. So he like used his fingers a little bit. Okay. Uh, we immediately discussed that soap does not go there. Uh, he said, yes, it does. I was so floored, I reached out to my female friends and family members who asked their husband the same question. All 15 men claim they indeed clean their buttholes with soap. Didn't we just decide that that's what you need to They're do? They're lying. They don't do that. No, no, no. He, you, they may not wash it out properly, but they yeah. get up there. Okay. Um, please tell the men of the world to stop doing this. Why? Do you like dirty buttholes? Exactly. <laughs> Male believe that soap should grace the entrance of blah, 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 piss on me, beat me, blah, blah, blah. No, honey, um, do what you're comfortable with, but uh, soap is an okay thing. I mean, you don't want to go too far. I think he just went too far because yeah. it can get irritating. Also, this, doesn't the soap disrupt the pH? I, sorry, the it, pH it, of the of the stuff? Not so <laughs> much. It's it's not like a vagina, right? Because mm. vaginas is a, is a very carefully maintained <laughs> ecosystem. Um, I like how you call it a vagina ecosystem. Yeah, and, and the asshole is much more uh, populated by a lot of random stuff, bacteria, that sort of thing. Okay. So we're going to go watch some videos here, right? Oh, so yeah, you need okay, I'm going to take okay. your, your phones, headphones off just yet. All right, here we go. Oh, my God. Don't put people getting hurt. Poopers, poopers. and toys. I so guess that means like... Poppers? You know, help me, guys. What do you think? No, yeah, I think she's right. I think they meant to say poppers. They or, just or, misspelled it. Cause it's, you cause can't like advertise. A country, you know? It's a different country, right? Oh, is that? Oh, let me see. Uh, is that French? Accessoire. No, accessories. Is oh, that like in Amsterdam? Yes, it's French. Oh. Yeah, down below. It's, it's, oh, yeah, it's forbidden true. for minors on the bottom. Ooh. Uh, and uh, I wonder if they mean anal plugs or something. Is that possible? Hmm. Can we be way off? Wait, don't aren't poppers sold at sex shops? Yeah, but yeah. I don't think you can but that's advertise for butt, that's it. That's for butt stuff, isn't it? I think poppers. Yes, you go. <laughs> interesting. That I've, I've done poppers, but never done anything to my booty hole. Yeah. So anal sex. That's a no, no. Uh, I meant like the poppers don't do anything. What do well, they, they do? can relax you. That's so. Some people will say that they use them to relax the muscles, so they can be more receptive for anal sex. Oh, not I your didn't thing. felt anything there. Not, not your thing. No. Okay. Next. Guys, please stop saying that my eyes are too far apart on the live. I don't look like Sid the Sloth. Oh, but you, you do. You know what? I wouldn't be even looking at her eyes right now, so. Looking at her, her breasts? Yes. Is that what we're looking they at? look beautiful. That's what matters, okay? But, but she does have, but here's the thing. Her eyes are way far apart, but most models have ours, our eyes that are far apart. I mean, that's sort of a thing. It's sort of a, it's sort of considered beautiful. Yeah, that's why I can't be a model. Well, let's, uh, let's me say I've noticed I'm joking. Those are far apart. <laughs> no, they're not. They're perfect. I mean, they're, they're not like, okay, they're perfect. That's what I mean. I mean, they're far enough to be perfect. That's, I'm what, I mean. that's what I mean. I'm very little and I have issues. Um, that's why I can be a model. I would be doing everyone's cocaine. Um, yeah, she looks gorgeous. Okay. Yeah, exactly. All right, mm. another one. Oh, I've seen this one. 
Is that a raccoon? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, she throws it. I've seen this, too. Yeah. They can bite. Yeah. Oh, she froze. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh, it's biting. It's a family of raccoons, is that what you said? I have no idea. Rabbit raccoon. A rabbit raccoon. It may my or may not be a rabbit raccoon. Raccoons are can be nasty. They don't be rabbit yeah. nasty. They're, I mean they eat in the trash. My mom would have chopped my leg right there. She would have chopped your leg off? Yeah, she would like take take the fucking leg, get out of here. Do you, have you ever worked with Christina P? No, but I think she's amazing. I saw her live. That was one of the best performances I ever seen. It, it just occurs to me that you had the same mom. Oh, we do? Y- yeah. Huh. Her, her mom was pretty brutal that way, too. Like, I, I could imagine her saying something like that about her mom chopping her leg off. Christina, Let's, call me. Let's get, get her on where my mom's at. Yes. I think it'd be good. All right, TikTok. What the oh, hell? Oh, I've seen that, that one, what too. What is it? She's doing voodoo. voodoo. Oh, she's sticking it. Yeah. Yeah, there's a homeless person though, right? Uh, that, this has just made me feel I spend a lot of time on TikTok. I am, I'm a little worried about you that way. I know. What, do you, what kind of stuff do you watch? Stuff I shouldn't. Like what? I don't know. I'm just looking for like beauty advice sometimes or just like things that are funny. And then it's been three hours and I'm sitting down on the toilet and now I have hemorrhoids. And you could have called your friend too. Yeah. It's the, your shitty friend. I am. But TikTok is... Um, it's weird how much it pulls you down the rabbit it's hole, awful. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's, it, it's so it, unhealthy. I agree. I, but, I, but at the same time, like when I had COVID, I spent, I, I really couldn't do anything but sort of scroll on TikTok. And I was actually grateful for the people that put content there because it was the only sort of distraction I had felt like shit. Yeah. Uh, and so it's not all bad, but, but it pulls you in in ways that uh, it's such a waste, such it a is. waste of time. Although I, I have stuff on my TikTok feed where, I kind of learn. There's, I, I have strange nerdy stuff on there, physics and things like that. And That's so I, cool. I kind of learn something sometimes, not much, but at least I feel like I'm getting something out of it. Yeah. For me, it's more like inspirational stuff. Sometimes I get like a lot of interesting videos that makes me feel better about myself. Like what? I don't know. Just like, you know... I can think anything of the top of my head, but it's like, for example, uh, when you're to be creative, you have to just keep doing it. You don't have to write a script and think this is going to be perfect. Just write whatever. Right. You know, just keep and going. I'm, and me personally, I'm always feeling, like, oh, oh no, this is not good enough. Oh, no, I have no. so many notes like that. No, no, no. You have to just yeah. keep creating, creating and something will evolve. I'm just thinking about some of the stuff. I, I'm always amazed. <laughs> my feet always has a bunch of hot chicks in it. Of and, course. And, and, I and don't, why is that, Doctor Drew? And but this is what I'm I'm saying. I don't seek it. I, it must be about they must read what my eye does or something, mm-hmm. or I must I must stay on what it. What does just, your eye do? I'm guessing it scans way it always has my whole life. But but it, but I'm I'm wondering if I spend like a more a second more there, and the algorithm picks that up and and throws that much much more there because I I n- never. I mean I I swear to you. I don't seek it. Why are you so uncomfortable right now? Because it makes me uncomfortable that that's that's happening to me all the time. And it's like, I feel kind of guilty about it. And it's like... It's okay. It's okay to look. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It doesn't mean anything. No, I understand that. But how weird that the algorithm can be that, what feels to me like so subtle, they can pick that up and just start sending stuff. Yeah, it is really weird. I have a lot of spiritual stuff and like witch stuff. And I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, these modern ladies that they proclaim themselves as witches so the and i'm just like thing. yeah and i'm just like what is this about and i'm like oh you know what they are? i get i get what? a lot of asmr stuff too oh that's the, disgusting uh, it would, i i know why why would i why is it disgusting do you tell me i just feel like it's it makes me feel it's, it's like, creepy it's creepy yeah i feel like i have them breathing down my neck i'm like no, it's, get the fuck it's, out it's, of here you know what it is it's the, it's the opposite of passionate oh yeah it's I the opposite like the other side of the biological spectrum from passionate yeah and then and then every time they do it they're never sad they're always like really yeah. happy into things like and why are you so happy about this and there's so many of them i like how does that why are there so many and they all kind of do the same thing and, and again maybe it's my astonishment at it that keeps me there for an extra second or something and boom the algorithm throws <sighs> throws them at me i have a problem with people that do like hard breathing stuff so for me that's an issue what is that I'm not, I'm not. do you know those people for example you know the, like i'm doing right now those people that <sighs> eat they eat and then they like 
make sounds. Yes, yes. And I'm like, that's disgusting. Uh, I'm like, can you get the fuck out of here? Do you have something like that to show us? I know that's kind of it's kind of, it's, that's kind uh, of difficult. It's very specific. It's a little bit well, of Christina's. You know, a, a, I mean, actually, yeah, I, I think I might have something close to it. <laughs> okay, I don't mind if a bear does noises. He's supposed Look how to. Cute he is. Oh my god. That looks incredibly dangerous. <laughs> that it is does. a fucking grizzly bear. The white part of me would try to kiss him between his eyes. Oh, dude, the white oh. part of you would have your head bitten off in two seconds. And it would be worth it. Really? No. Okay. <laughs> I, I I just really I it it kind of bothers me when people are overly that way with bears because yeah. they are they're not they want to eat and destroy and keep of safe course. and do I what they do. I saw this video of a baby bear and he this lady was holding him and and he bit her chin. Oh sure, like the bleeding bit. I don't know. I just saw him attached to it and she was like shouting, of she was course. screaming. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and send us that link if you could find it. I'm thinking you guys ought to dig up some ASMR and stuff. If people may not know what I'm talking about with that, uh, maybe I can I send you guys TikToks. Not just all Christina's feed. Can I send sure, stuff? Sure, you can send us stuff. Let's see a puke roller coaster just for fun. Oh no! No, that's not your thing. Would you go on a, on a roller comes. coaster? Oh no! Oh, oh, oh no. no! I feel so embarrassed for her. She has to walk out of there look like the that. Guy looking at her, looking at him like, well, what are you gonna do, man? Oh, Jesus. Woo. Ugh. Wow. How could there be so much in her stomach? Because she's fat. Oh, poor dear. God bless her. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, mm. I would be like, well, I'm going to go kill myself now. This has been a great date. <laughs> so you can't, if somebody were to see you vomiting, that would be... Are there other things that you find just like so ashaming that you just couldn't like? like you I'm ashamed about everything, Doctor Drew. From like things that happened ten years ago, I also have nightmares about it. Give an example. <sighs> mm, like I stutter, and sometimes it's things I can control. Um, you, I remember you literally beat yourself up for stuttering. Yeah, and you speak three languages, and yeah. you beat, that's ridiculous. Yeah, no, like, I do. Officially, that makes me angry. Sorry. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't know. So many things, so many things that are not even in on my control. Uh, like when I dislocate my knee for the first time, mm. um, you do I, your kneecap. Your kneecap was round. Yeah, yeah. can I yeah. take this off? Yeah, yeah. Um, because I feel like I'm shouting with you. Yeah. Was I shouting? No. Okay, cool. Um, so I was doing long jump. Do you call that long jump when you have to jump to this? A box of sand. Yes, but you've also mentioned that you're a small person, that usually yeah. that's a big, tall person. I was a teenager. That. I've been like this since I'm seven. Okay. No, I'm joking. Um, I'm like 5'3". Um, but so in Portugal, I was, I so I wouldn't go home. I did a lot of sports because then I had to stay school in school longer. So I was in all the teams. I did basketball. I did volleyball. I did like uh, cross country. You, you get out of school earlier? Is that what you're saying? So I would have to stay in school and I didn't have to you go home. You didn't want to go home. Oh, you hated your parents. Yeah, I, I didn't want to go home to my and parents. And your brother's a pussy, yeah. Yeah. Is he older or younger? He's way older. He's like 43. The fuck? And he was planned. Can you believe that shit? Yeah, you were in a mistake. But anyway. Mistakes are way more better and passionate and interesting. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so my, my coach at the time, he said, hey, I want you to do the interschool competitions where there would be um, like somebody would be doing long jump and then and the person would be doing con country, cross country. And then there would be like sprinting. He put me in all of them. And I said, I can't do all of this uh, because that's a lot. Yeah. And he's like, no, you're going to do it if you want to have the five. Because in Portugal, the grades are from one to five, mm. like five being the best, right? Um, so I'm like really tired and... I, I go to jump, but what happened was, I'm gonna turn this way so I show you how my legs were. Mm -hmm. So what happened was, instead of being like this, can you see my legs? Straight, instead of straightened out. A little then, higher. Instead of, yep. Can you see like this? Yep. Okay, instead of being like this, I put my feet sideways like this. And so you, you twisted your knee. Yeah, so it, it hit and my knee jumped yeah. out. Yeah. And I was, I was in so, I don't know if you ever felt this way, yeah. Where I was in knees so really hurt. much pain yeah, yeah. that I laid back and I start laughing oh. like Joker because I'm a psychopath. No, I was just like, I was in so we'll much pain. <laughs> I didn't know what to say. And my coach was like, why did you lay down? Because he didn't realize what happened. And then I felt really embarrassed because the, the ambulance came and they took me in and they had to pull my jeans off. 
and I was embarrassed. I was wearing some panties from Winnie the Pooh panties. So I'm embarrassed about that. That's, that's funny. I'm embarrassed about. That, that, come on. That's good comedy. Yeah. You should lean into that one. I'm embarrassed about that. And then. You should not be, <laughs> you should lean into that. That is, that's actually high comedy. So wait, the comedy is not there yet. Um, because they called my dad and they said, hey, your daughter went to uh, the hospital in an emergency. And my dad is a very tough guy. He's like super tough. He sends out like this, like two of mine in one. And he has like all these cuts and awful, like he is, he's fucking tough, okay? Not and a pussy. Not a pussy. You admire that about him. I mean, kind of. When it doesn't um, get directed at you negatively. Yeah. Mm. I feel like my mom is tougher than him, but he's tough. Women and, are just generally tougher than men. Yeah, that's generally. true. Yeah. She gave birth to me at 43 with no... And you didn't die in her, in her uterus. It's crazy. No, I didn't. Uh, anyway, what, what was I? You were um, in the hospital. It was not yeah, just so, the Winnie the Pooh panties, but what so else? So they opened the door and my dad, he has like a tissue and he's like crying and he's like, oh my God, are you okay? And then I'm like with my Winnie the Pooh panties and there's like these two other guys like on a, in the ambulance that they're like the firefighters or whatever. Do you do the firefighter yeah, here yeah, in the ambulance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, are those my Winnie the Pooh panties? Oh. No, I'm joking. He didn't have oh that. My God. No, I, I think joking. it's actually funnier um, that you were upset about it. How old were you at the time, like 15? No, I think I was like 14. But I was, I, I, the thing is that my mom didn't want, didn't want me to get surgery on my knee mm. because she had a friend who had the same issue and she got worse. Mm. After so, the surgery. Yeah. Yeah. So I never got surgery and I always dislocated my knee. Mm. So, cause I, I surfed as well. I did all these things. I was very active. So I always dislocated my knee, but I learned how to pop it back in place. Right. And one time I was going down the stairs and my grandma, my grandma, she's, she's like, the toughest woman I ever seen. Like her brother committed suicide and she found him hanging on a tree and she like ran uphill and she's like, she's very masculine. Like one time she looked at me and she was like dead ass staring at me like this, right? And then she goes, girl, you got some big ass lips, girl. <laughs> and I'm like, in, yeah. In English? Like, no, she said it in Portuguese. Okay, I was going to say. Whoa. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She's very tough. She doesn't know how to express love. She died. Anyway, but... um. Where was I? Where was I going with this? So she she can barely move. She's like Ugh. she could could barely move. She has a very hard time sitting down and getting up. Because she's so old now. Yes, she's dead now. But she we were I was going down the stairs in my house and I fell and I dislocated my knee and she got up so fast. And then my mom comes, my dad comes, and he he's like, do that trick that you do with your leg, oh, just pop it back. My God. And I'm like, no, it's a trick. I like, I tried, but because it took too long and I, I couldn't do it. And my mm. legs start swelling, swelling, oh, swelling. Oh my. And then, and then I'm like that for two weeks where I can't walk. Oh, geez. You know, uh, Mel B, the Spice Girl, she's a friend of mine. She has the mm -hmm. exact same thing, same leg. Really? Mm -hmm. Exact same thing. Even with all that money, she still has issues with her knee? I, I don't know the story behind it. I'll find out. I was okay. actually trying to reach her today and okay. I'll sort of say, why did you ever get that fixed? I, but I, you don't have to fix that kind of thing. So it's kind of interesting. You don't have to? If it's what I think it, it is, I mean, it's, it's a pain in the ass because it'll go out all the time. But speaking of going out, we have to go out. We have to wrap up. Oh, we damn. Do. It's this, been fun. I can listen to your oh stories. Oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry. I, I, I did talk a lot. I can listen to your stories. They are fantastic. Thank you. I, I appreciate you being here. Okay. And did being I talk open. a lot? Um, yeah, but I could listen. I mean, it's good. That's, a, that's <laughs> okay. called an you're asset. Great. I feel better. Great. Yeah, that's called a good thing. Okay. It's not, yeah, I, I could sit and li literally, as you were talking, I'm thinking to myself, I don't know if you, when you're in your comedy, if there's a lot of storytelling, but I thought if there is, I could just sit and listen. Oh, that's awesome. You know, so, Thank you. So congratulations. Do you still think I'm aggressive? Passionate. Perfect. That Passionate. was a test and you passed. Thank you. Thank you. We'll leave yes. it there. Thank you all. Awesome. We'll see you next time. Thank you. All conversations and information exchanged during participation of the Dr. Drew After Dark podcast or interaction on the drdrew.com website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. Do not confuse this with treatment or physician medical advice or direction per se. You must always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing on these podcasts or posted on this site supplements or supersedes the relationship and direction of your medical caretakers. Please understand, I am not playing the role of physician in this environment per se. I'm educating. I am a licensed physician with specialty boards in American Board of Internal Medicine and American Board of Addiction Medicine.